investigation. Ta -da! You thought it was time for the investigation, but it's the Monokuma file. Wow, it's even more swanky than before. Hey, hey! Just as I thought, you amateurs need this, right? What, what the hell is a Monokuma file? I don't like this. Jeez. Explaining the rules all the time really breaks my bones! The last time I checked, you didn't have any bones, Monokuma. Who are you? Well, it's not like I have bones in the first place. Like, don't even make me say such lame jokes! Allow me to explain! Let's see! The Monokuma file contains precise and detailed information regarding the dead body. What? I brought it to you so you guys can smoothly proceed with the investigation. I'm such a nice guy. You know, besides the whole forcing us to kill each other thing. Sure, Monokuma, sure. Shing! I'm so nice. I want to be known as the Mother Teresa of the mascot world. Hey, hey. Nice, you say? You're just a selfish meanie. What's this? My, my, my. Monami, the meaningless mascot. You're still here? You stupid brother! Don't put me in the meaningless mascot genre! Damn it! Come on! Let's go! Your turn is already up! Hurry up and get the hell out of here with me! <laughs> Ouchie! Don't pull my ears! They're gonna come off! They're... finally gone. The Monokuma file, huh? Anyway... I guess I should look it over just in case. Alright, Monokuma file number one. Yuck, holy crap. It's like a freaking tablet. Yep, it's definitely more high tech. Alright, the victim's body was discovered in the dining hall of the old building near the Hotel Mirai. The estimated time of death is 11.30. The victim was repeatedly stabbed over 10 times between the throat and abdominal, uh, abdominal region, resulting in death. Like, look at that. The bottom left of the picture, you actually see like, the circles there probably mean like, you know, the place that he was stabbed at. Aside from that, the body has no other external injuries, and no chemicals such as poison were detected. Hmm. So, Biakuya is really dead. Damn it. You promised there wouldn't be, be even be one victim. Why did you end up being one? And now, I'll never know what you were going to say to me. All oh, right, about his history, about his past. I cannot talk to others about my past. Uh, I suspect that my uh, skeptical nature is partly to blame. Distrusting others and being distrusted in turn. For a long time, my life has been a living hell. It was inevitable that I would end up this way. But that, the thing about that is, right, is that it's, for me at least, the first thing that comes to mind again is Danganronpa 1. But why wouldn't he just, if I were him in that situation, maybe obviously we don't know the entire situation, but if he knows, if he remembers Danganronpa 1, or at least the, the, the per, you know, assuming that this takes place at, right after Danganronpa, or at least after in the story, you know, in, in as far as time progression goes. And then assuming he does remember it, the first thing I would say like, fuck, I'm not this again, and then actually let people know, you know, that he has gone through something similar, he knows what is going on, he knows what Monokuma's plan is, and blah blah blah. But the fact that he didn't makes me seem like, obviously he didn't know, because Monokuma said his memory was wiped. But still, the way he said it really hinted towards it though. But then you start to wonder, like, if that really is the case, why did he not, why did he feel that he couldn't really talk about it or say it? Huh. I don't know, and then it, it makes me question, like, why is he the first one to die? Could, he, could it be that someone was the traitor and was ordered to kill Byakuya because of that? Because, you know, the first murder, remember what the, the very first murder was supposed to be? in uh, Danganronpa run, right? Because the thing how it should have gone according to Monokuma was that they had a traitor, you know, a spy amongst us, which was Sakura. And uh, Monokuma's plan was to let Sakura commit the first murder so that, you know, the ball starts rolling because 
obviously, you know, when not, no murders happened yet, you sort of start to think like, ah, oh, we, we can all stick together, you know, then nobody is as scared because then everything sort of seems like possible empty threats. But the moment someone dies, you know, people start to realize that this is for real, everything that Monokuma said. So that's why um, it was just an insurance plan for Monokuma to make sure that the first murder would happen and then, you know, then the rest will basically unfold itself, will play out by itself. And uh, then Monokuma didn't account for Sayaka's plan and, you know, but that's basically how the ball started rolling. Sayaka actually just, you know, was actually quicker to try and commit a murder than Monokuma even planned to have Sakura commit one. So it could be that he has something similar in, in mind in this as well, that, you know, oh, let's bring Ryakuya here, a person that uh, has gone through this before, blah, blah, blah. I mean, it, it, it's strange that he is the, the first one, the only character that we know from Danganronpa 1, and that he is the first one to die. There has to be a connection there, I feel, you know? But it could be that the traitor was just basically ordered, all right, let's kill Ryakuya, because it, it's basically just to, to get the ball start, uh, start rolling, you know, to get the show on the road. So, uh, that's that's a possibility, but then we gotta look like, yeah, who's the traitor, or whatever. <sighs> why did it have to be Akuya? Well, I kind of just mentioned why it possibly could have, but, yeah. In the end, what did he even mean? And that's the thing, you know, like, he said, on my wa nobody's gonna, I'm, the, I'm not gonna let anybody die on my watch, something along those lines, right? And sure, technically that has happened. If, I mean, if you discount, I don't think he mean, meant himself, he meant like, you know, other people, that he was going to protect all the other people. So him technically dying first and nobody dying on his watch means he kind of fulfilled his duty, his promise, right? But that makes it seem like he knew this was going to happen, but how? How? Could it be? Even so, if there really is a traitor, isn't that just gosh darn awful? Pretending to be your ally and tricking you guys. It can't be helped if someone like that gets killed, right? Huh. A traitor? Like, that. Uh, but that that seems to hint, or at least Hajime is probably thinking right now that Byakuya is the traitor because Byakuya was like really pushing, like, alright guys, let's stick together. And then he wanted to betray it, but I don't think that's the case. I don't know. No way. Just because he said a lot of serious things, it doesn't mean he was the traitor. What? What am I thinking? Obtain truth bullets. Anyway, we need to carefully examine everything. That's right. I need to do it. If we're gonna survive this, we need to do it. I have to prepare myself for the worst. <laughs> Uh, who's in the room? I guess we'll talk with everyone first. Mikan. I must investigate my body, a classmate's body. <laughs> yes, I'm the one who has medical knowledge. <laughs> That's why I, I need to do it. To, 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 to do it. Uh, somehow. Before you start, why don't you calm down a bit? <laughs> You're right. I need to calm down first. I, I, I'm careless enough as it is. That's pretty obvious from how you felt earlier. Uh, <laughs> I, I am terribly sorry about that for showing you something so unsightly. Ah! Yeah, you, you made me remember it again. <laughs> oh God. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I made such a fool of myself in front of everyone. Does that bottle have to be there with the liquid pouring out? Does that really have to be there? Forget making a fool of yourself. How in the world did you end up like that? Uh, well, I got startled by the blackout, slipped on the carpet, and once I was struggling to get back up. <laughs> How embarrassing! Please, please erase it from your memory. Uh, even if you ask me, I won't be able to forget it so easily. Sorry. Uh, 
I can't stand it. Tame truth bullet, huh? Embarrassing po Is that really a truth bullet? That seems weird. I mean, the fact that she fell during when it was... Was this during, during it was dark? Yeah, because when, I remember, yeah. When the lights immediately turned on, this is how we saw her in this compromising position, right? So this definitely happened during the lights were off. So this is, you know, to at least indicate that she was moving around. But to be fair, that was pretty much something everybody was doing. But it could just be that something was, someone was sneaking around, you know, caught her by surprise, accidentally knocked her over or something. But I don't know, she has been dubbed as clumsy, so it could just... It, she, could, she could definitely fall like this or any other way without anyone knocking or pushing her or anything, you know? So... It's just an idea that could have happened that someone in the dark is just sneaking around and, and accidentally nudged her a bit that made her fall. Right. Nagito. Hey. Hajime. There's something I want to run by you. Before the blackout occurred, Byaki was in the dining hall with the rest of us. Right? Yeah, that's right. Hmm. And if Byaki has dead body, was discovered after the blackout. Well, it obviously happened during the blackout. Then, don't you think he died during the blackouts? Well, now that you mention it, but why was Byakuya's body under a table? Even if the killer tried to hide him, it's not like he would have stayed hidden forever. Isn't it confusing? Isn't it more of a surprise how the body ended up there anyway, or in the first place? Cause. He either must have been killed while under the table, or someone dragged his body there. But it, we don't seem to see any other blood, like you know, drag marks or anything along those lines. So what is Biakia doing there under the table in the first place? Because what it looks like that he was just hiding under there or something during the blackout, and he got found and got killed. Maybe he thought he would be a target. That would make sense for him to hide. You're absolutely right. It seems, finding out what exactly happened during the blackout is key to solving the mystery. There's no way I'd know. It was so dark during the blackout, I couldn't see a thing. That's not it. Although, if seeing was impossible, then there's a possibility someone might have heard something. Heard something? Yeah, I didn't hear Byakuya scream like, Ugh! When someone gets stabbed, you tend to scream, you know? Ah. Uh, are you talking about her? Wait, who? Mika? I don't know. Mahiru. Mahiru, are you alright? Yeah, I'm fine. What's going on? Is that what you expected me to say? Because I feel terrible. One minute Byakuya is alive and well, and in an instant, something awful suddenly happens. Of course I'm not fine. Why? And not only that, but whoever killed him is one of us, right? That hasn't been determined yet. It's already been determined. You've already accepted it, haven't you? This is the worst. That we have to find out who the killer is. Find out which friend killed our friend. I don't like it either, but we won't survive. If we don't go through with it, it's not just for yourself. We have to do it to protect all of us. If, if I had only acted calmer during the blackout, Byakuya might have still be alive. This is the worst. This whole thing would have never happened. Stop blaming yourself. Nothing good will come of it. Jeez. Getting cheered up by a boy isn't like me at all! Got it! Hey, Hajime! Forget about what I just said, okay? Got it? Y yeah that's fine. I got it. Hmm... Anyway... I won't dwell on it for now. I can't become a burden to everyone. I really don't get this girl. She is really confusing to me. I, I really can't, can't describe her. I don't know, there's something about her. Plus, there might be a clue that only I have access to. A clue? Hey, 
photos. The ones I took just before the blackout. Remember? Oh. Hey, Byakuya. Everyone, come on. I'm gonna take a picture. Alright, say cheese. Huh, what are the pictures? Oh, yeah. The pictures. Hmm. Oh, wanna see them? I have a digital camera, so I can show them to you right now. Really? Please. Um... Right. <laughs> we actually see ourselves in a photo. Let's see. If this photo... Hmm. If this photo, Byaku is standing in the corner there. Uh -huh. Gundam, Akane going ham all over the food. And this one... I took these two right before the blackouts, but... Huh? huh? Is something wrong? I don't see something too much... Hmm... I didn't realize it until now, but right before the blackout, Byakuya was... standing in a totally different place than when we found him. Wasn't his body under that table with the lamp on top of it? The one underneath the monitor. Um, I'm guessing the the table is like hidden behind Gundam right now. But yeah, he's standing on like the opposite side of the room almost. Prior to that, Byakuya was standing along the wall farthest away from that table. You, you're right. That's pretty far. So that really means that either Byakuya moved all the way to the table or the killer moved Byakuya all the way to the table. But. Not many people are capable of carrying or dragging Byakuya that far, I feel. So, you know. There's something. Everyone's standing position before the blackout might be a huge clue. Hey, can you approximate everybody's standing at positions from this photo? Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. It'd be hard to understand from the photos alone, so it might be better for me to plot it out. Hmm... But would that actually provide a clue? I don't know yet, but I feel like it could. Leave it to me! Got it. Then leave it to me. That's pretty much the only job I can do anyway. Thank you. Alright, now that that's decided... You better do your best! You better work hard on your investigation too. How much long are you planning to stand around? See, like... Uh, I, uh, she, she has like, I don't know, if not, not bipolar or something. I don't feel like there's dramatic switches. But sometimes she's like very nice and now, now she's like bossy ordering us around a bit. And like, you know, guys supposed to do this, girls supposed to do that. I don't know, I find it really hard to describe her. Do you understand? What's going on? You gotta find out how Byakuya died. Yeah, I know, but it's good she's all fired up now. But she's a totally different person now than when she was feeling down, exactly. And when she was sad, she was... I don't know, <laughs> this girl is so confusing to me. I don't know what to say. Like, it's so confusing, I can't even think of words. Uh-oh, the jewel in case is actually open. Well, we'll, we'll head to that after this. Yeah. Oh, hellhound earring. Answer my call. He was actually wearing an earring. I'm pretty sure he was, for sure. Impossible! Tch, is this effort futile as well? Hey, are you still looking for the earring you dropped? You! It is not a mere earring. It is the Hellhound earring. Fine. Long ago, in a faraway land, a beast known as the Hellhound was feared by all, even by he who summoned it. Well, this is certainly random. The Hellhound tore its way through innumerable battlefields, its fangs glistening with blood, and his drenched, blood-red fur would dry in the howling winds of loneliness. When I finally tamed that diabolic beast, I received an earring to commemorate that event. Shiver! The Hellhound Earring. So that I may never forget that night I battled that fearsome Pomerian. <laughs> Pomerian, really? He said Hellhound. 
Hell, Pomerian is not a hellhound. Pomerian is a little fluffy, cute little dog. I wear that earring at all times. Was that really? About a friggin' Pomerian? I understand it's important to you, but for now, we need to investigate. I won't let you! Where is it? Where did it disappear to? Maybe it fell underneath the floor. The carpet didn't cover the whole floor. It might have fallen through the gaps between the exposed floorboards. <laughs> so that's what's transpired. Such a clever little bauble. Gundam laughed uproariously as he walked towards the wall and pressed his head against the gaps in the floor and peered beneath the floorboards. I can see it! Ah! There it is! I have found it! Truly, that is the Hellhound Earring! <laughs> it seems God exists for my benefit. I see. Good for you. Let me ask. However, how do I recover it? I cannot fit my arm through this opening. Were I to use a tool, it would probably not reach either. Then maybe you should just give up? What? Give up? What? The world? I meant to give up the earring. You! Fool! Have you not yet realized? The world will come to an end if the human race were ever to lose that earring. You humans are so satisfied with clothing yourselves in layers of false knowledge. If you flinch, you will die! But even with all those layers, you still will not survive the winter. Wh why am I being scolded? Fine. Tch, it was foolish of me to rely on you fools. Fine. I shall do something about it on my own. Now if you'll excuse me, I must go save the world. He wants that earring back by any means necessary. His determination is truly inspiring. But it'd be nice if he actually helped me with the investigation. Yeah, if he only, you know... Wait, gaps in the floorboard. It's probably gonna be useful. Well, definitely. It's a clue, right? Ah. This is the metal case Byakuya had with him. He said it was made of dur uh, duralumin. I don't know what that word means. The last time I saw it, it was closed. But there are a lot of odd things inside the case, like a nightstick and pepper spray. Hmm? What's this? Oh, that's the case probably for the night vision goggles. A hard plastic case, but it's just a case. The inside is empty. Oh. I have a feeling, right? Byakuya accounted for this? And, I mean, you know, th there are two possibilities as far as the night vision goggles go. Either Byakuya um, put it on himself, which would explain why he was able to reach, you know, all the way from the other side to the room to, to, you know, to reach one side of the room to the other during the blackouts because he seemed to have suddenly appeared in, in on the other side of the room, you know? And during the blackout, it's not an easy way to navigate, especially when you're that big through, you know, tables and everything like that. People that are standing still probably moving around as well. So it's either that he was wearing the night vision goggles or the killer was. But if the killer was wearing it, then it's kind of, you know, bad of the killer to leave it right next to Byakuya. I wonder what was inside, but the only thing that really catches my attention is the small key. It must be the key to the other Duralumin case. That other case was in the office, and all of the, the collected dangerous items were inside of it. If the key to that Duralumin case is right here, then it's unlikely that the murder weapon used to kill Byakuya was taken from that case, meaning it, it has to be, remember, it, one knife was whis missing, right? I'm pretty sure one knife was missing, and Teru Teru claimed that it was already missing before he entered the kitchen here, so it could be possible, you know, that, you know, five years ago or something during when people were still using this kitchen, they accidentally lost one knife. But wouldn't someone even bother to, you know, update that particular sheet and just, you know, uh, cross off the 20 and turn it into 19? 
I don't know. That really seems to point more that someone actually took the knife either before Terra Terra or it was Terra Terra himself or after, I don't know. But someone tech definitely took that knife from the kitchen and it's the one that's not handed in. Or confiscated by Biakria rather, so yeah, it's definitely that one I think. Which means the weapons inside that Dura Lumen case aren't related to Biakria's murder. Even so, I still don't get it. Why did Biakria have this Dura Lumen case in the first place? That seems like he was prepared. He either planned for this to happen or he was prepared for worst case scenario. A case packed with all the security equipment. Like, you, you see gloves? Is that a taser? There's a taser in there as well. Pepper spray. Maybe he was being extra cautious, just in case. No, that can't be right. That's way too overboard. Could he have known something was going to happen beforehand? What if Biakia's plan was actually, you know, to force something to happen by, by you know, planning this entire party and stuff like that, to actually force for something to happen? I don't know. It's I, but how could he? How could he possibly do that on his own? He really has to just. I don't think he can actually force anything to happen unless he works with other people. I don't think he can do that alone. But he could. The thing that he could do is just you know plan this and then hope for people to, uh, you know, to 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 basically just put people in a situation where it's where it's very easy for someone to try and commit a murder. But then it's kind of ironic that he ends up the one be, being dead, isn't it? I don't know. But it definitely seems like he was prepared in case of, well, anything, like a blackout, definitely. Like, there's no other way you would bring night vision goggles unless you were expecting a blackout. And because of that, he went to all this trouble to be extra careful. Alright, do a lumen case. Uh, let's check out some of the food or dishes. There is a lot, or there are a lot of fancy looking party dishes. In the end, nobody really ate that much. I can't imagine these are related to the incident. Right, not at all, none of the food. Such a huge table. There's nothing out of the ordinary, alright. This table either. It's not tasty looking. Nope, nothing, okay. Well, um, I think that's gonna be pretty much it. Well, what is this thing? AC remote control. Huh, a remote controlled air conditioner. Hmm? Air conditioner? Could it be? Hey, all of you, why can't you act a little more grown up? Huh? Hmm? What was that sound just now? Huh. We heard the beep, yeah? This air conditioner conditioner is probably the only machine inside this room. And the air conditioners is remote control. The timer is set to 11.30. I'm pretty sure Biakuya's time of death was around the same time. If so, that means that mechanical sound before the blackout, it probably came from this air conditioner. My flashes of inspiration aren't as bad as I thought. Huh. But what what it's set to start at 11.30 or shut off? But I guess the most important thing in there is the time. Well, it's time to look at the body. Right under this very table, Biakuya was... First, I should investigate the top of the table. Though, the only thing on top of this table that really catches my eye is... This desk lamp, it looks like an antique lamp, and it seems rather heavy. The power cord was connected to the outlet, so it would have been useless during the blackouts. Other than that, there's nothing else on the table that really stands out to me, so... Now's not the time for me to flinch. I gotta do it! I let out a shout, as if to encourage myself and quickly looked beneath the table. Oh, just peek, peek around it, oh god. What is that sticker thingy with something green on it? Looks like tape or something. 
immediately, I noticed an unexplainable smell, like rusted iron hanging in the air. And during the stinging pain in the back of my eyes, I slowly shifted my gaze towards Byakuya's body. Byakuya Togami, the ultimate affluent progeny, he was the kind of guy who said a lot of hurtful things, but he tried his best to lead everyone. Why? Why did he have to end up like this? The only thing I can do right now, for Byakuya's sake, is to uncover the truth behind his death. What is here exactly? There are five things. Night vision goggles. Hmm? What is this? It looks like binoculars. But why is there a pair of binoculars under the table? Hey. Hajime, those aren't binoculars. Huh? Then what are they? Perhaps. Those are probably night vision goggles. N night vision goggles? I've seen them at the supermarket on this island. They also stock self-defense kits too. Uh, if that's the case, did the killer use these night vision goggles to kill Byakuya during the blackout? I don't think so, because that would have been incredibly reckless and uh, of the killer to just leave it here. Beneath the table, huh? Something stuck to the back of the table. I is this duct tape? There seems to be paint applied to the non sticky side of the duct tape. In the dim light beneath the table, it seems to glow dully. Could this be glowing paint? Ah, oh, glow in the dark. Look, oh, that's where the knife was hidden. Look, it's definitely attached. Green, green, for sure. Bloody knife? Is this the weapon that killed Byakuya? Uh, why does it really seem to point at, you know, Byakuya hit the knife here? Then, I don't know, somehow planned the blackout, but that, I don't know how he planned that though. You have to, it, it, it could be that it's some way connected to the AC and then when the AC goes off, the light goes, uh, uh, the AC goes on or whatever. The timer thing on the, the AC, that's when the light turned off as well you know and then Byakuya just puts his plan into action he puts on the night vision goggles that's why he wants to stay near his his case as well then he he you know he knows he whether he hit the knife so with the night vision goggles he moves to the table to grab the knife but then what the heck did he just stab himself did someone else stab him uh, like it seems that this is possible that Byakuya tried to to Plan this to then kill someone, but he ends up the one being uh, being dead. I don't know. Hold on. How did the killer bring this knife to the dining hall in the first place? Byakuya threw, uh, thoroughly patted down everyone and thoroughly inspected every corner of this old building. And all the confiscated dangerous items were supposed to be placed in that Duralumen case. It's possible they stole this knife from the case. Or they hid it somewhere hard to find. Also, there's one more thing about this knife that's strange. There's some kind of paint that's been applied to the hilt. In the dim light beneath the table, it seems to glow dully. Could this be glowing paint? Yep, definitely. Definitely. My right, blood stain. The blood flowing from Byakuya's body, from the huge pool under the table. That's a lot of blood. There's blood splattered everywhere. Even the inner side of the table cloth is covered in blood. The blood might have splattered all over the place when he got stabbed. But there doesn't seem to be any drag marks leading from the pool, uh, blood pool. So he was definitely, I mean it makes sense, the, the knife is apparently from here as well. So definitely, Byakuya moved here to, I don't know, it has to be to grab the knife. But then who else is here to actually kill him with the knife? I, to me it actually seems like suicide, but there's no reason for him to do that. 
That's what it seems to point out right now, because that makes the most sense. He moves here with the night vision goggles, he grabs a knife, but why would you hide a knife that just to kill yourself? Doesn't make much sense, so my thought is to, that he hit the knife here to possibly kill someone else. But then something happened where the, the, the rolls or the tables got flipped, got turned, and he ends up the one being stabbed instead. But definitely, Byakuya got stabbed underneath this table. He grabbed the knife here, done something happened, and he got stabbed with the knife instead. Alright, bloodstain under the table. Here we go, Byakuya's body. The body is collapsed face down under the table, as if he was in the middle of attempting something. It looks like he was. I mean, it could be that someone knew about his plan, and he was like Byaki was sneaking through, uh, sneaking to the the knife, and someone was already there waiting for him with the knife. And then when he saw Byaki at chak chak chak, he just stabbed him ten times, and then Byaki is dead. Because it seems to be, if you look at the position, right, it definitely seems like if he came, Byaki came from the other side, that he was crawling towards the knife, and then someone's already waiting there for him because he hasn't reached the position where his body is right now in in the you know dead position it's not close enough to reach the knife he could possibly reach it by stretching his hand very far forward but even then he like might barely reach it so it seems like I, I, that makes much more sense actually someone was waiting for him there with the knife but then someone would have to be it had to have been someone who knew about the knife in the first place or accidentally stumbled upon it but that means that that person must have been here the moment the blackout happened, near the near this table and near this uh, knife. But it definitely looks that way to me now. Byakuya crawled there and he got stabbed before he could even grab the knife that he wanted to grab. According to the Monokuma file, he was repeatedly stabbed between the throat and abdominal. Uh, abdominal. Why do I keep saying abdominal when it's ab? Abdominal, 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 that's the stomach area, abdominal, repeatedly stabbed, and the throat and, and ab abdominal region, that's, those are things that are very exposed when you're crawling through, you know, crawling like that, under a table. Would one of us really do something so horrible? Seems like it's... Um... I'm sure I've pretty much investigated what's under the table. Despite the fact that it's just me, I think I'm working pretty hard. Even if it's just a little, I'm sure we're getting close to the truth behind Bihakuya's death. Now then, where else should I investigate? Hajime. A moment? Huh? What is it? Hey. When we're finished with the investigation here, would you like to hear what everyone else has to say together? If I go by myself, some people might not talk to me out of caution. Well, we've been told that one of us is a killer. It can't be helped if everyone's on edge right now. But why me? <laughs> hmm, you're easy to talk to. And I feel like you have a scent similar to mine. A scent similar to you once? We both harbor special feelings towards Hope's Peak Academy. Isn't that right? What? Well, yeah, but... Fine. If we're going together, let's get on with it. There's no time for idle chit-chat. Thanks. I'm glad. It'll be a great help. Special feelings, huh? Even so, what he said about us being similar, I don't think I agree. Huh. Now then. I, I feel like we both represent Makoto in some way, but only like, you know? Okay, if you take both uh, certain halves of us, certain parts of us, it would make up Mono uh, Makoto entirely. I could agree with that, but that's probably not what he meant. I don't know. 